In this lesson, we're going to discuss social media etiquette, ground rules for keeping your marriage safe. It's so important that we take the time to discuss this because as the internet has been introduced to society, we've seen the impact that it's had on relationships. Uh, unfortunately, there's a higher uh, percentage of infidelity and affairs that have occurred simply because of the internet. Just like when women entered into the workforce uh, and now you have men and women in the same work environment and social space, they had access and opportunity one to one another. And when that begins to happen, inappropriate relationships do form. So just as there was a major surge in infidelity as women uh, obtained rights and entered into the workforce, we now see uh, with the onslaught of uh, the internet and our ability to create all types of personal accounts, uh, there is a high percentage of infidelity as well. So if I have a Facebook page, if I have a Twitter account, if I'm using Instagram or Snapchat or LinkedIn, it really doesn't matter what the nature of the social media platform is, uh, the forum that I join, the chat group, uh, whatever it may be, um, it's not like uh, the internet or technology makes you bad, it doesn't. Technology makes you a bigger version of what you already are. So if you're a cheater before technology, uh, you're gonna be a bigger and better cheater as a result of technology. However, uh, what can happen is technology uh, presents a whole new world to you and creates vulnerabilities uh, that you didn't, uh, that you weren't exposed to before and your natural um, platonic interactions with members of the opposite sex, if you don't have proper boundaries and borders, you may cross lines because lines have now become blurred and what you thought was appropriate, you realize becomes problematic and now you're in situations that you never anticipated being in. We know that when you really do uh, talk to divorce attorneys, uh, they will tell you that an overwhelming number of divorce Divorces are a result of Facebook. Why? Because it gave someone access into a world of opportunities that they did not have access to before. And so with the internet, you really, really, really have to be careful. Uh, statistics would suggest when you use Facebook or any type of social media platform to connect with an old flame, an old high school or college sweetheart, an ex, uh, after 30 minutes of conversation, uh, interestingly enough, your emotions have a memory. And so you begin to conjure up emotional memories that you've shared with this particular person. So the feeling that you once had, you begin to feel again. The chemistry that you once had, you begin to have again. And over 30 days, if you continue uh, in any type of form of communication, it transitions from being a very you know, one-way transactional linear type of conversation to something that goes offline. Now you're talking on the phone, now you're texting, now you're sexting, and now you're meeting up and getting together and, and it transitions into a full-blown affair. And these things occur because there aren't ground rules. So it doesn't mean that people are willingly and intentionally and maliciously seeking out inappropriate relationships, but because we haven't had the proper conversation conversations, these relationships become inappropriate. And so we're going to talk about the ground rules of a successful relationship and how to protect yourself from social media and other types of internet based forms of access. Ground rule number one, choose married as your relationship status. Now this is very, very important because you want to take the opportunity to announce to the world that you're in a committed, mutually beneficial, long lasting relationship with your partner. And so when you don't do that, it leaves so many people suspect to what your relationship status is, which can lead to all types of problems down the line. So make sure you put marry, don't put it's complicated to be funny, don't put no status, don't put interested in women, let the world know that you're married to a woman or to a man. Ground rule number two, claim your spouse on Facebook. Now this is very, very important. Here you have now an opportunity of connecting your spouse's page to your page. So not only are you stating that you're married, but you're actually uh, identifying who your spouse is so that if I'm looking on your profile page, I can click on your spouse's name on your page and it will take me to her page or his page. Now that's very, very important because you don't want any type of ambiguity uh, when it comes to who you're choosing as a spouse and who you're identifying yourself with.
Ground rule number three, share your passwords with your partner. Now, I can't tell you how vitally important this step is. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. my phone. Leave my phone alone. What are you doing? Why? Why? Why don't you want me to touch your phone? Then I just don't want phone. you to touch my phone. Then why? What is inside that phone that you don't want me the to touch? The reason best known to me. How can people? How will you say reason is best, best, best known to best known to me? Oftentimes, so many spouses live in secret, they have their own private lives, and they feel as if it's an invasion of one's privacy for someone to have access to their social media accounts, their email, their cell phones, whatever the case may be. But if you're operating according to the principle of radical honesty, if there's trust and transparency in your relationship, and if you're operating in integrity, this won't be a problem. So I now have the ability to log into my wife's Facebook account, and she has the ability Ability to log into mine and so you want to uh, let your spouse know that there's no concerns there's nothing to worry about you know everything that you're doing is on the up and up it also becomes an accountability uh, issue for you because Unfortunately, we have all types of people who inbox us, right? They can be old flames, they could be people who are interested in the pictures that we share, and so a lot of inappropriate messaging can take place on Facebook. And so by knowing that your partner has access to it and communicating in a way, assuming that, you know what, it just may be the day where my spouse takes a look at my inbox messages, it's a reminder to operate in a level of integrity. Ground rule number four. Do not use Facebook as a place to air your dirty laundry, especially concerning your spouse. Now, I'm sure you've read the post before. Urgh, I'm just so angry at my husband. I hate when he does that. <laughs> and so you just announced to the world that you're frustrated with your partner. And so you've welcomed the world into the private affairs of your home. You've let them know that there's a problem, that there's a conflict. And what happens is you don't know who's reading your post. You don't know what Facebook stalker has been looking at every single picture, reading every single post, is looking for the perfect opportunity to slide on in because you're in a moment of emotional weakness. You gotta be careful what you put out there. You know, I think it's hilarious when I read the post that suggests, you know what, oh, I love washing the dishes, vacuuming the floor, folding all the clothes, and cleaning the house all by myself, exclamation mark times 10. It's sarcasm, but once again, is bringing the world into your personal affairs. And when you use uh, the internet, social media, uh, platforms as an opportunity to vent about your, first, your frustrations, that's passive aggressive behavior which cannot be healthy at all. And really, it serves to dishonor your spouse and it really pisses him or her off. And you'll have to deal with so many other things as a result of doing that. I've seen how people have done that and then the spouse reads what was on the post and wait till we get home, we're gonna have a conversation. And if the relationship is unhealthy, it even goes to the next level. So listen, don't do anything that would be disparaging to your partner. Ground rule number five, be smart about what you post. Never write or share pictures or uh, videos that would make your partner feel uncomfortable. You know, I know that there are many attractive people who are actually online and want the world to know. So their sexiest poses, their little flirtatious kisses and hugs with the camera, uh, their insinuating dispositions, give off the wrong message, and really a married person or a person in a committed relationship shouldn't give off that impression which is very welcoming to the world. They should know that you're in a loving, mutually beneficial, committed, long-lasting relationship and your attraction is to your partner and your partner alone. So there is no opportunity here so don't give them any signs or any signals that would indicate anything else so you should have I'm not saying that you should be like a nun but you should be somewhat reserved uh, and you should be somewhat I, I would say um, uh, conventional if you will traditional if you will in how you present yourself be conservative out of respect for your spouse ground rule number six pick your friends wisely let me tell you something people who have Facebook have a tendency to have the ability of befriending people they don't know. Now, even I have 5,000 friends, but ask me how many of them do I actually know? Probably about a rat's nostrils worth, maybe 
of my 5,000 friends I actually have a relationship with, I actually know and can identify. And so what happens is, you know, having 5,000 friends is almost like social clout. It's a way of presenting to the world, hey, I'm important, I have all these friends who you have no conversations with, who you have no dialogue with, no history with. And so in the process, you're clicking and clicking and clicking, adding people to your list, but you're not even aware of who you're adding. You could be adding old flames, you could be adding exes, you could be adding stalkers, you could be adding people who hate your guts. You don't know because you're not taking the time to discover them. And so anytime I accept a friend now with the knowledge and wisdom that I have, I do a few things. Number one, I'm gonna look at your picture. Do I recognize your face? Do I recognize your name? Now, if it's a member of the opposite sex who wants to befriend me, the first thing I wanna know is why. Are there any connections? Do we share any mutual friends? I may look through your pictures to see if you're the type of person uh, who I should connect with. Do you appear to be single? Are you in a relationship? Do you have children? Do you have a family? I'm looking for all these identifiers. I'm reading through your posts. Do you use profanity? Do you have suggestive pictures? You know, what are your political views? What do you talk about? Because one thing about Facebook in particular now, uh, it is so uh, sophisticated in how they interpret everything that you do, they automatically assume that if you are friends with someone, the value system and the political views of that person are shared by you. So if you have somebody who is diametrically opposed politically and spiritually and socially, educationally and in every other way, you're being connected to someone who does not share your values and it could wind up impacting you. But beyond all of that, you've got to take the time to really consider who the person is before you befriend them. If they don't add any value or potentially won't add any value, they're not worthy of being a friend. So be very careful who you select for the purpose of protecting your marriage. Ground rule number seven, don't post everything on Facebook or Twitter. You know, because of the internet, many of us are living out our lives on social media. So every thought we think, we have to tweet it. Every feeling or emotion we experience, we have to post it, but nobody cares. You know, I think it's so insane how at one time, you know, Facebook Live, as an example, was used for personalities, people who had a large fan base because the world had a more intimate access to a particular person and they could share what they're doing in their day, they can send messages, they could sell products. It's a great way to connect with the people. Now we all have it. So literally I see people doing, you know, doing Facebook Live in their car eating a sandwich or sitting on their couch reading a book. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like you're wasting your time. Do something more productive. Don't live out your life on the internet because that's the only form of communication and relationship that you have. You don't have to post everything. Like some of us have the tendency to have to post every date with our spouse, have to post every new picture of their child. And so what they're doing is, if you look at all of the pictures combined, all of the videos combined, all of the posts combined, you're really exposing every nook and cranny of your life with the rest of the world. And that information at some point can be used against you. And so be very careful what you share, particularly about your partner, about your marriage, about your relationship, about your private intimate affairs. It is no one's business, so your private life should not be put on public display. Ground rule number eight, don't poke your friends. <laughs> Listen, if you're in a committed relationship, don't poke a member of the opposite sex. Don't poke an ex. Don't poke a new friend. Don't allow anybody to poke you. A poke is simply an opportunity for somebody to say, hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm thinking about you. There are no words exchanged. There are no pictures that are posted. It's simply just that, a poke. And a poke is a suggestive way of saying, pay attention to me, look at me, engage with me, start a conversation with me, but it's done in a very passive type of way. The only person that you should be poking, whether virtually or physically, is your partner. And if you're poking around with anyone else, you're doing the wrong thing that creates a violation in your relationship. Ground rule number nine, 
Say nice things about your spouse. Now, for all of the negative things that we could share, take the opportunity to express how much you appreciate your partner. Take the opportunity to share what nice thing your partner did for you or your experience with your partner. Let the world know you're in love. Now, let me balance this because some people have a tendency of lying to the rest of the world about how great their relationship is. And so on Facebook, they're in love and the most, they were the most romantic couple and nothing could separate them. But in real life, they have no relationship. They fight like cats and dogs. They're filing for divorce. And so they're living out a fictitious reality online to save face. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that, but if you do have a healthy relationship, take the time to celebrate it to the rest of the world because what it does is it's endearing. Your partner begins to appreciate it. People begin to be inspired and motivated uh, for their own relationships because of how you express your genuine love and care with your spouse uh, on social media. Ground rule number 10, ask your partner before friending any controversial figures. Listen. Before you befriend an ex, an old flame, an ex-spouse, whoever it may be, a friend that your partner may have considered to be an inappropriate close call relationship, you know, honor your partner by asking him or her what he or she thinks. You know, how would they feel uh, with that connection? Now, some people just connect just to say that they're your friend, but when they start liking and sharing information on your wall and privately inboxing you, you know, you're leaving a door uh, of opportunity open, a window of opportunity open. So if your partner has a problem with that, and if they consider it to be a violation or, you know, makes the relationship vulnerable, honor your spouse and do not befriend them. You know, I have a rule not to friend, you know, people who I had some love affair with or deep, long, passionate relationships with. How could that be helpful? It can't. So as a ground rule, you shouldn't do it either. Ground rule number 11. Don't comment on other people's appearances. I can't tell you how important that really is. And some would say, well, what's the big deal? Like what's wrong with complimenting someone? What's wrong with acknowledging, you know, how attractive someone is or, you know, how they look in that dress? Because what that does is it gives, um, an invitation uh, for you to establish an inappropriate relationship, forms of communication with someone who you just complimented. But I've seen time and time again where a person is always complimenting another person for how they look and how their hair is and how they're dressing. Eventually, if that person really loves those compliments, they're fed by those compliments, that person begins to dress just to receive the compliment. So now they're going out of their way to look a certain way and to smell a certain way because they know uh, the attention and the admiration that they get from that experience. So something that can be initially a very honest, uh, platonic, uh, non-threatening thing to do can be confused and lead to all types of problems. So if that can happen offline, it certainly can happen online. And so when you're taking the time to write beautiful, sexy, all of these types of words, expressing how you feel about some woman or some man, and you have a partner uh, that needs those words of affirmation as well, it's really problematic and it's a behavior that you should not do. Ground rule number 12, don't hide any postings from your spouse. Now, this speaks to honesty and integrity and transparency. You know, if you wouldn't keep secrets offline, then it's not good to keep secrets online. So if you're going out of your way to share things, post things and inbox things as a way of keeping your partner from it, then that's a problem in the relationship that needs to be rectified. So technology, unfortunately, presents an opportunity for you to do just that. So if you're stealth and clandestine in nature, it's a sign that something's wrong in a relationship. Ground rule number 13. Don't drag fights onto Facebook. Now, I've seen countless times where literally spouses will go to war with each other and literally be posting things on each other's wall. Uh, or we'll talk about in-laws. We'll talk about such and such, uh, you know, friends, their partner's friends, or it would just vent on social media. Once again, uh, it is a violation to the relationship and something that you should not do. And if you can't resolve the issue by posting, certainly you shouldn't do it because the goal should be to create resolution and solution, not things that will further exacerbate the problems in the relationship. Ground rule number 14, don't flirt with people on social media. 
once again, if flirtation is wrong offline, it's certainly wrong online. And oftentimes when you're flirting, you're flirting with someone that you pretty much have some type of attraction for or attraction to. You certainly wouldn't flirt with somebody where there was absolutely no interest. And so for some people, it's an opportunity to test and see, hmm, is there any interest there? And where's this thing gonna go? So it starts with compliments and you know subtle you know comments that you make, and then it begins to develop into something more, and then it becomes inappropriate. And so oftentimes we've seen that relationships that started online soon go offline and then that's when a full-fledged affair takes place, which is a major violation to the relationship. So to avoid that altogether, be careful what you say, be careful what you post, and do not flirt as a cardinal rule for your relationship. Ground rule number 15, defriend anyone who crosses normal boundaries. You know, I have had the opportunity of putting quite a few people on blast <laughs> in a very uh, appropriate and intellectual way on Facebook. So from time to time, I would have people inbox me and begin to, uh, I don't know, begin suggestive conversations or give invitations for something more. And uh, I made it perfectly clear, not only to them, but to the world, you know, you might as well not waste your time inboxing me, asking me if I'm interested in any type of sexual relationship or any type of emotional connection because I'm married and I'm not interested. And I, it's funny, that was the, one of the most liked, commented and shared posts that I ever had because of how I actually positioned it. So if you find that somebody is constantly inappropriately uh, liking your stuff, making suggestive comments and inboxing you, just take the time to defriend them because what it will do is will, it will, it's an added uh, level of protection uh, for your marriage and it honors your partner. Ground rule number 16, post pictures of you and your spouse on your Facebook page. You would be blown away. How many couples who I counsel who you would not know that they were married if you looked at their social media platforms. Like literally there's no evidence of a marriage, of a spouse, of anything. And I remember one time going through both partners' pages and probably after scrolling for about 20 minutes and noticing that I didn't see any evidence, I asked them, you know, why is it that you don't have a picture, a post, a comment, anything referencing your spouse or your marriage on your Facebook page? And I got a lot of ums and wells and, you know, people justify whatever they want. And my thing is, if you go out of your way not to uh, have any evidence of your partner, then there's an indication that you're doing something that is inappropriate and you wanna keep your life very separate and single. I know several, several people who have certain professions that feel if, if the world knows I'm in a relationship, it may impact my ability to do what I do. So for instance, I know masseuses, I know personal trainers, I know all types of people who are celebrities who do everything possible to let the world think that they're single because somehow they'll lose their fan base, they'll lose their clientele if for any reason they find out that that person's in a committed relationship because ultimately they believe that their fan base and following are all in love and all want them. And as long as there's a mystery and as long as they're single, the money starts uh, continues to flow in. But the minute they make the announcement, that's when the business will be shut down, which is one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever heard. And so if you're struggling with your partner to add your presence to the page, time for a conversation. Ground rule number 17, comment on your spouse's posts. From time to time, acknowledge your spouse's posts, like them, share them, comment on them. It lets them know that you're looking, you're observing, not stalking, not checking up on them, but that you find an interest in their day and what they're doing and that you're supportive of the posts that they are sharing. Ground rule number 18, flirt with your spouse online. From time to time, it would be a great idea to flirt, to uh, compliment on how beautiful and how sexy your partner is and do it on their wall so the world knows how in love you are as a couple. With all the couples who are beefing and fighting and have conflict in their marriage, sometimes people believe that, wow, there is hope for something better for us because I see what this couple over here is doing. They naturally express their love, they flirt with each other. You know, we need to make our relationship the way it once was and begin to do what they do. And it becomes all inspiring. So not only do it for the world, not only do it for your partner, but do it for yourself. Ground rule number 18, think before you post. 
Before you post a picture or a comment or a video, think, what impact will this have on my reputation? What impact will this have on my marriage? A day from now, a month from now, a year from now, what impact will this have on my life? If there's anything that can be brought into question, if there's anything that you are unsure of, if there's anything that you're in doubt of, if in doubt, do without. Because the long-term consequences of a momentary thought which leads to a post can do more damage than good. So be very careful, be very selective, and make sure that everything you do online is honoring to your partner. We have just covered the 18 ground rules of social media etiquette for the purpose of protecting your marriage. If you love your spouse, if you love your marriage, if you want to build walls of protection around your relationship, then you have to follow these ground rules that put your marriage in the proper order and structure in order for it to be long lasting and sustainable. You follow these principles, your marriage will benefit.